Welcome to Mraz Family Farms. This started in 2014 and it was covered with a 47 year old avocado grove. And when avocado trees get really old and really tall, they, the production shuts down. So what were we gonna do? And, and we decided that, that this was a place where we were gonna stump these avocado trees and regrow them to be community for a planting of 2,332 coffee trees. Part of what we wanted to realize is how we could combine multiple crops into one area because we want to have not just one crop once a year. And that's actually very important for a farmer. When you only have one big crop to sell in a year, you can miss it. For example, the Haas avocados have one season of the year. But just the diversity that we have here is epic. And uh, with that diversity, we'll be able to sell crop 52 weeks of the year. So one of the things about coffee that we've learned is it really likes to have um, companionship, other plants around it. Coffee needs sunshine to, to flower and set fruit, but it doesn't want to be ripped by the wind on a constant basis. So when we planted this grove, we created protection from the Santa Ana winds specifically. So the coffee we're learning loves this cultivated, um, protected environment, but we're allowing them to get as much sun as possible. The spacing here originally is 28 feet per avocado tree. So these, these rows are six feet apart and then the plants themselves are six feet apart. So our avocado rows, here's one of the avocado rows, two rows of coffee. This is a cross section now of, of this row of coffee. These bushes have filled in really nicely. And this is, this is what we call a grown in system. These coffee trees have been growing. We planted them in the fall of 2015, and so six years. I wanted the plants to be close enough that that to go through them we were brushing them on either side and this has really proven to make for very happy coffee trees. Well some of the coffee trees are kind of right up under the edge of the avocados um, like right over here. So here's an interesting row where we've let this avocado tree get bigger and bigger and it's sort of pushing the coffee trees over as they seek the sunshine. See how they're both of these trees are, are leaning out to grab the sunshine. So we're finding that, that we prune the, the avocado back a little bit so that it's not too shaded and that keeps the production going. And then this is one of our main alley spaces that, that gives us access to bring in supplies and equipment. This particular one is a little bit wider. So we've also been experimenting growing cover crops. And this is one of our biodiversity spots right here where we have nasturtiums and alyssum and, and California poppies and calendula that'll provide us with pollinator activity, but also help keep beneficial insects in the area. When we're thinking about how we're gonna design, we have to think in systems. It was originally an avocado grove. It's 47 years old. It had one monoculture and it was old enough that it was time for maybe it to be all cut down and, and redone. The, the professional view was cut all the trees down and put in new trees. Exactly the same pattern, just new trees. What we decided was, no, let's, let's create a polyculture and see where the strength of the system is. And now we can see that the avocados are thriving. If you look across them, they're like a wall. They, overlap one another, creating a windbreak pattern that goes all the way across the farm so that where the coffee trees are, they're much less exposed to the, to the really whipping influences of the wind. And that's been one of the main things that, that we've found that's really important. We're talking about this polyculture effect, you know, of planting more than one crop together. And the ecosystem services are, are very broad. One of them is biodiversity biodiversity for insect control is very important. So some of the problems of monoculture are pest issues 
you, you have all the same food, but when you have it mixed up with different things, it's more difficult for them to continuously move from one plant to another. They get interrupted by confusion. Plus, when you have a pest insect, it's usually living uh, without predators around it to get to really grow out of control. And so when we have a biodiverse system with these pollen producing flowers year round, we're keeping beneficial insects right here where we need them rather than having, hoping they'll come from someplace else. And that's one biodiversity service. But also, we effectively are growing two crops here with the same amount of water that we grew the original crop with. Because the water's not, contained to the individual tree. It's, it's spreading out in the soil and both are benefiting from it. And our overall water is, is less than we expected because we thought we'd have to have twice as much water. But it's really almost exactly the same as we did when we had a monoculture. It's hugely better economically because it helps to use water more efficiently and we're growing two, three, four crops in the same space. At the end of the, the day, you want this to pay for itself. Mm -hmm. So how do we make it pay for itself? Well, we've got to be more efficient. 